Hi, I'm Danny and these are my diecast disasters. In this video I'm going to be tidying up and customising a Matchbox Super Kings K80 Dodge Custom Van. These were produced from 1980 until 1981. This casting was also produced as an ambulance, a police car and a delivery van. These included a Frankfurter van, a drinks van, a chemical van and a Michelin van. I own an example of the Michelin van and I may restore it in the future. Let's take a closer look at our custom Dodge van. The paint job is not in the worst condition I've ever seen, but I think it's pretty ugly in this blue and the tampos on the side are terrible in my opinion. Most of the chrome has gone from the plastic fittings, revealing the red plastic underneath. This custom van has a really cool detailed interior. It just has a terrible colour scheme and hideous floral design on the bed sheet. There are four rivets holding the base onto the body casting. I drill these out and take the vehicle apart. Oddly this tiny little yellow steering wheel popped out as I was pulling that apart. Here we can finally get a close up look at that horrible floral bed. A couple more rivets had to be carefully drilled out to remove the windscreen. As the windscreen sections usually tend to be made out of the most brittle plastic, it is good to take extra care when removing them, as it's very easy to bend them too much and create hairline cracks.
This is a very thick, heavy casting. It's not the thickest King's casting I've seen, but the sides are getting on for an eighth of an inch thick, I'd say. I use some paint stripper to remove the paint from the casting. Once the paint was wrinkled and weakened, I wash it off with some cold water. Here are the parts after paint stripping. You can see some interesting patterns in this casting, perhaps where the metal flowed in and cooled. Here you can have a better view of just how thick the side walls are on this casting. I use some steel wool and a wire brush on my rotary tool to clean up the castings and remove the oxidation. I'm missing one of the side mirrors, so I'm going to fill the notch in where it would have been. And I'm also going to fill these holes for the aerials on the bonnet of the van. As far as I can tell from looking at real life images of these old Dodge vans, they never had the aerials on the bonnet like that. I start by filling the holes with some epoxy putty. I use needle files and sandpaper to tidy up the epoxy. I then apply a small amount of Tamiya putty to the fixes as a finer layer of filler. After this has cured it is sanded down again and then a layer of primer is applied. This is again sanded down. I now have very smooth fixes that you shouldn't notice once the model is painted. The van is then painted with a mixture of Vallejo metal medium and hull red. I take some measurements from the side of the van and use Photoshop to design some decals from album covers from my favourite band Hawkwind. With the van body painted, decaled and curing, I move on to the interior. 
There's some nice 70s, 80s style comfort in this Dodge van with a little television, some light fittings, a couple of bottles of wine. There's a pestle and mortar there and some wine glasses. The exposed parts of the windscreen section are a little bit yellowed. I first see if I can polish some of this away, but it doesn't make much difference. Next I tried putting it in a clear plastic bag with some hydrogen peroxide and leaving it out in the sun for about 5 days. Well, I guess it looks a little bit less yellow. It hasn't totally cleared it up, perhaps if I'd left it for another week or so. I pop out the little steering wheel from the dash and put it aside and then give the three large interior sections a coat of white primer. Good riddance to that horrible floral design. The interior is airbrushed with some layers of purples and reds to try and get a satiny, velvety appearance. And the interior items are detailed as well. These parts were then finished with a satin varnish. I wonder what they were going to grind up with that pestle and mortar. Some tap hop water and a small amount of caustic soda is used to remove the chrome from the other plastic parts. Remember not to touch this caustic solution as it will burn you. You can see the flakes of chrome paint floating to the top of the jar immediately. These were then painted with Vallejo Mecca black and then metal color chrome. Here I am using a dark wash to detail the front grille and headlight section. The chrome parts are finished with a gloss varnish. Moving on to the base, I first remove the wheels and axles. These are easily popped out from underneath the suspension plate. I carefully use some steel wool to clean up a bit of the rust on the steel suspension plate and then I paint the entire base in my favourite Molotow Silver Dollar Rattle Can. A dark wash is applied. Next I add some metallic and oil stain weathering powders. A great thing about most of the Super Kings models is that they had these cool, realistic looking wheels and tyres, as opposed to most of the Speed Kings which just had larger versions of the super fast wheels.
I give the rims a dark wash to help them pop a little more. The tyres are fairly worn and faded looking, so I'm going to give them a dip in floor polish to shine them up. To detail the steering wheel, I first gave it a coat of white primer, and then painted it with brown and gun metallic and gave it a wash. And finally, here are all of our parts tidied up, painted and ready to go back together. So counting the aerials and missing side mirror, that's like 23 pieces to this model. 24 if you counted the tires and rims as separate. That's a lot of pieces to put together in the factory. The model was put back together using an epoxy adhesive in place of the rivets. I then used some epoxy putty and my watch tool to make some faux rivets where the old ones would have been. Once these had cured, they were painted with the same metallic brown that I used to paint the rest of the van. Before we take a look at our finished custom Dodge van, let's take a moment to be reminded of what we started with. A worn looking matchbox Dodge van with a chipped paint job, a lot of missing chrome, a missing side mirror, broken aerials, worn out tyres and a cool but horribly coloured interior. And here it is, transformed into my custom Hawkwind Rockers van. The ugly blue paint job and horrible tampos on the side are gone, replaced with a nice metallic red-brown and some cool trippy Hawkwind album cover murals. The bumpers and fittings have had a nice new coat of chrome. The holes where the missing aerials and side mirror should have been have been nicely tidied up and the rims and tyres have been given some shading and a nice shine up. Looking through the open rear doors we can see our shagadelic interior. Who wouldn't want to cruise off to a hippie rock festival for the weekend in this? The artwork is from the Hawkwind albums Warrior on the Edge of Time and Hall of the Mountain Grill. If you haven't checked out the band, I highly recommend you do, as they are awesome psychedelic space rock band that started in the 60s and are still playing live gigs today. This custom was actually quite a lot of work and took me a couple of weeks to get done. I'm really happy with the result and I think it looks heaps better than when I started. At least for me anyway, I'll be much happier having it on my shelf looking like this. Thanks heaps for watching everyone. If you enjoy this video please like and subscribe.